Frustrating, isn't it? This is what life is like for people with seizures. In any given day, they can lose seconds or even minutes of their lives. Approximately 2.7 million people in America have epilepsy combined. My name is Lori O'Driscoll, and I am the mother of Kira, who is four, and Aiden, who's one. And Kira has been diagnosed with Dravet syndrome, which is also called severe myoclonic epilepsy of infancy. On June 30th, 2005, I had taken her to a grocery store, and I was pushing her, and she sort of slid over, and I thought she was playing a game with me, so I sat her back up, and she slid over again, and then I thought she was shivering. So I picked her up, and when I looked at her eyes, her eyes were sort of twitching, so uh, I didn't know what it was. It sure didn't look like a seizure. I don't even think seizure was in my my schema at that point. Then she started really shaking and I said, you know what, just call 911. And the paramedics arrived. They actually took her from me and took her to the hospital. Um, and they said she's having a seizure. It lasted for 25 minutes. At the time she had a very slight fever. It was like 99.9. So they thought maybe it was from the fever, but they kept her in the hospital. I think it was for three days and ran every test under the sun. They did a, a spinal tap, they did a CAT scan, an MRI, um, and everything came back normal, so they sent us home without medication, thinking it was most likely febrile seizures. Exactly one month later, we were going to a friend's bridal shower, and we drove, it took us about two hours to get there, so she was asleep the whole car ride. And within five minutes of waking up at the shower, she went into another seizure, and that one was 45 minutes and we were close enough to the hospital that we just decided to get in the car and take her. No fever this time. So this time they said to us, you know, it's, this is probably some sort of seizure disorder of unknown origin. And they sent us home on our first seizure medication. And right after that she started having myoclonic jerks, which are basically second long seizures. Um, it's like when you're falling asleep and your leg will jerk, that's what she had, except sometimes it would be her arm, sometimes it would be her leg, sometimes it would be her head. She wasn't walking at that point, so we didn't have to worry about her falling, but when she was playing, sometimes they were so powerful, it was as if someone took the back of her head and slammed her into the toy she was playing with, or the table or the floor. So very quickly, I had to adapt my life so that I was literally beside her every second, um, because you just couldn't leave her. On November 2nd of that year, she had an hour and 15 minute long seizure and was hospitalized for a while. You're okay, Kira. Mommy's right here. December 11th of that year, they called me in. I didn't know I was going in to get test results, which was unfortunate because I didn't bring William with me. Um, but they told me at that meeting that she had Dravet syndrome, not to worry. Uh, so I left the room going, okay, we have a diagnosis. I had no clue what it was. Went home, got online, and started doing the research on it, realizing that this was a life-altering prognosis and that things were only going to get worse for her. she's a happy girl is the, the the most important thing I think to us because like when she was born you, you know we wouldn't have mapped out her career going to college or anything to that effect but you think that she'd have the opportunities that everyone else had and then you kind of have to gradually come to the conclusion that she's not and then you say to yourself all right she's not going to do what we expected but what what can we do every day to try to make it as best as possible for her and I think if you see little windows of Kira, you'd think she's a normal, happy kid, which to us is probably the best thing. Find yourself necessarily saying them, and it, it's difficult. But I think we've kind of defied the odds to this point that she she does lead a fairly normal life. So even though if you look at any of the medical histories, it's basically telling you that's not a possibility in the long term, but we can't think that that's the case, so we just hope she'll continue to be the exception. I mean, I think she kind of is the exception in getting this horrible thing in the first place, so why can't she then be the exception again and kind of
and managing it as well as possible. I think it's really easy to look at Kira and hear about Dravet syndrome, but watch her go through life and think that she's okay. Um, and as much as we want to have hope that she's going to be the one that sort of breaks the barrier and um, is 20 years old and going to college, I don't know sometimes how realistic that might be. Um, I think it's really important for people to understand that as much as we have hope for her, these seizures are serious and she's going into they call it status the seizures are 30 minutes or longer and every time she has a seizure there's a chance we're gonna lose her I'm hopeful that we're not but it's a reality that that we have to deal with every day um, and it's easy to watch her at school and think you know she's just like any other kid but but she's not so it's, you know, when, when people ask us, how's she doing, you can say, oh, she hasn't had a seizure in seven days, which two years ago, if you'd have said to me that that's, that's good, that you're only having a seizure once every seven days, how is that good? But it's better than when she was having 100 drop seizures a day. But should any child have to live like that? I don't think so.